When a borrower issues a risky bond, there is a likelihood for each year of the bond that the borrower may default on the bond. We call this probability the hazard rate, and for simplicity, we assume a constant hazard rate of 4% for each year. It is important that you understand the difference between hazard rate and the probability of default. The probability of default is the likelihood of a default in a particular year. So if the issue is a three-year zero coupon bond and the hazard rate is 4% each year, the probability of default in the first year would be 4%. The opposite metric is the probability of survival. For the first year, it would be 96%. Now, for the second year, given that the bond has not defaulted, we would have these two probabilities of default or no default. Note that these are conditional probabilities that there was no default in the previous year. So to calculate the unconditional probability, we need to multiply by the previous year's probability of survival. So for the second year, we have a 3.84% probability of default and 92.16% probability of survival. And repeat again for the third year, we have 3.69% probability of default and 88.47% probability of survival. You should see the pattern by now. For any given year t, and given a constant hazard rate, the probability of survival is 1 minus the hazard rate power t, and the probability of default is the previous probability of survival times the hazard rate. For credit risk analysis, we are more interested in the probability of default, which is different for each year. The exposure to the investor is also different for each year. The expected exposure is the maximum amount the investor stands to lose before any recovery is factored in. Our assumption is that default occurs at the end of each period, so the expected exposure is simply the value of the equivalent risk-free bond at the end of each period based on the benchmark yield curve. Assuming a flat benchmark yield of 3% and the zero-coupon bond has a face value of 100, the value of the zero-coupon bond should be 100 at the end of the third year, 97.087 at the end of the second, and 94.26 at the end of the first year. These are the expected exposures to the investor. Another important factor in credit analysis is the recovery rate. This is the percentage of the exposure the investor can reasonably expect in the event of a default. Loss severity is the opposite of the recovery rate. So let's say the recovery rate of the bond is expected to be 55%, the loss severity must be 45%. Multiply this to the expected exposure for each period, we get the loss given default. Simply, this is the amount that the investor can expect to lose in the event of default for that particular year. Given that we have the probability of default we calculated earlier, we can calculate the expected loss for each year. And because these amounts are in the future, we have to discount them back to today using the benchmark rates. Sum up the present values, we get this important figure known as the credit value adjustment or CVA in short. Now, before you scream at how complicated this process of modeling credit risk looks, it is actually quite spreadsheet friendly. First, gather the necessary assumptions, that is to estimate the hazard rate, recovery rate and loss severity for the bond issue. We will also need the benchmark yield curve or risk-free rates. For each year to bond maturity, Calculate the expected exposure to the investor. This is the value of the equivalent risk-free bond at the end of each period. If it is a zero-coupon bond, set the ending value for the final year at par and discount the par value to calculate the exposure amount for the preceding years. If you're wondering why we're using risk-free discount rates for a risky bond, we are in a way calculating the maximum value of the bond and based on these, calculate the amounts that may be lost, which will be subtracted at the end. Based on the expected exposure for each year, we calculate the loss given default based on the loss severity.
Next, use the hazard rate to work out the probability of default for each of the years. You may want to use the probability of survival to help, but it's not really necessary. Multiply by the probability of default for each year, we get the expected loss. Calculate the discount factors for each year based on the benchmark yield curve, we get the PV of expected loss. Sum them up, we have the CVA. The cumulative valuation adjustment is the amount of future credit risk in present value terms. One can also see it as a price adjustment over that of an equivalent risk-free bond. So, if we subtract it from the value of an equivalent risk-free bond, we get the value of the risky bond. Based on 3% risk-free rate, the price of a 3-year risk-free zero coupon bond is 91.514. If the three-year risky bond has a hazard rate of 4% and loss recovery of 55%, the CVA should be 4.748, so its value should be 86.767. CVA can also be expressed as a credit spread. Based on the price of 86.767 for the risky bond, the yield of the bond would be 4.85%. Since the benchmark rate is 3%, the credit spread must be 185 basis points. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.